grab our hymn books. We're going to sing at Calvary, at Calvary. On the first. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. To, uh, we, we didn't know what to expect concerning this, uh, but we're going to do our best to try to, to make this uh, as seamless as possible, um, but we're thankful that you all are here. Uh, we just got a few announcements. We're going to continue to have services as normal. We're not going to have, uh, uh, we have some announcements that we've already made. Uh, as you know, Pastor has messaged you all individually uh, concerning the uh, schedule and how we're going to run our services. And so we're going to keep to that, but also understand that things could be changing at any time. So just be aware of that. Be uh, uh, just be mindful of that, and be ready to adapt at any moment. We don't know what uh, what what changes are coming down the line, and uh, we're going to do the best that we can to uh, to obey the the government and their mandates. But also, uh, we want to obey the most important person, that's the Lord, and uh, and just to continue to hold services as long as that we can, uh, because that's what God commanded us to do. Amen. Amen. All right, our first announcement we have, don't forget that our, about our building updates. We have just received a letter uh, stating that we're approved for a building permit. Amen. Praise God for that. 
Uh, the dirt work will uh, is we're waiting on a proposal for the dirt work to be done, and then we're going to get started on doing uh, the the dirt. Uh, can you lower this just a tad, son? Um, the uh, we're going to get work get working on the dirt. Uh, once we get the dirt cleared out, then we'll lay a foundation down. Praise God for that. Uh, and just get rolling with it and this thing's gonna move quick. We're so thankful about what God's doing in our uh, With our building project. Amen And uh, so grateful for those that have con contributed and continue to give and continue to be a blessing to our church uh, It's just a blessing and so uh, those are pretty much where we're at currently concerning our building uh, Continue praying for that continue giving to that uh, and That we can um, continue going forward with that work uh, so that's all the announcements for the building update. Our next announcement we have is our men's Bible study. Just real quick, as I mentioned in the message, we'll not be having men's Bible study on Thursday. We are going to be waiting uh, till we see what happens with this. And then, uh, so just until further notice, men on Thursday nights will not be meeting. We will still be having discipleship class on Monday nights uh, for uh, the, uh, the, the disciples that we're, we're, do, we're doing discipleship class for. So just be aware of that. No men's Bible study this Thursday. Amen? All right, our next announcement. Um, our fundraiser, we were supposed to sell candy bars at the Walmart. On Saturday, that had been canceled due to the uh, situation that we're going through. Uh, they're not allowing, they have, they have restrictions on us selling candy bars in front of their store, but we're still trying to sell them. Got a couple of updates about that. Um, our uh, fundraising captain, uh, uh, Adelina, um, She's uh, amazing, amazing, does an amazing job. She got a hold of World's Finest Chocolate and they are gonna give us a two month extension mm -hmm. on those, having that money for those, uh, for, the, for the first part of that money that we have to have that we normally have in 30 days. We, they're gonna give us two months. So uh, we're gonna get through this, amen? And so be encouraged. This thing is putting a stop to everything, but you know what? God, God's got it all under control and we're gonna continue on. And so we're just asking that however you can, try to take a box, sell a box, do whatever you can. We need to still fundraise, amen? And so uh, we do have another date on the 28th, which is this Saturday. Uh, Walmart did say to call on Friday to find out if they're gonna lift the, the restriction. If they are, then we'll, I'll send out a message and we will go sell them on Saturday. If not, uh, then we'll just be prepared like we have been and just continue trusting the Lord for our fundraising, amen? Uh, by the way, if you do want a candy bar, please let me know. We have plenty of boxes. Amen. And so praise God for that. Uh, so that's uh, all the announcements we have for our fundraising. Um, our next announcements are uh, Easter celebration. I uh, got confirmation through Pastor uh, Padilla. We will be able to use the building 8.30 in the morning. On April 12th, we'll be having a sunrise, so to speak, service. So an early morning service, and then we'll be having our annual Easter barbecue at the park, catty corner from where our new property is located, uh, off Lunter and Bob McCanny. And so we will be having a church uh, function there. We'll have a barbecue, we'll have a good time. April 12th is still a long ways away. Uh, we plan on getting back to regular service on April 5th, and then Wednesday night service is on April 8th. So April 12th will be after that. Uh, we are looking to do communion also for members only. We, uh, we, we hold closed communion. We're going to do that on the Friday before Easter. So that will be uh, the 10th, if I'm not mistaken, should be the Friday before. And I'll give you all more notice on that and send you all messages concerning that. Um, so just be aware, be watching out for that. Amen. So Easter services, we're going to have it at 830. And then we'll go over to the park and we'll, we'll celebrate uh, the Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Amen. All right. Uh, do we have any uh, prayer requests or blessings at this time? Anybody prayer requests or blessings you'd like to share with the church? Continue to pray for our church. Pray for our, our building. Pray for those that are not here uh, for health reasons or uh, just in case they're taking precautions. We all should be taking precautions. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you're doing the necessary things to stay healthy. Amen. Amen. And so... Uh, at this time, if we don't have any uh, uh, prayer requests or blessings, let's go ahead and get the usher to come on up here. Uh, Jacob Burrell, will you please come on up here? And we are going to take the offering. Uh, we, we, we still need to function as a church, amen? And so we need to just continue doing things as normal. And uh, praise the Lord for that. 
And Jacob, you are you are live, amen. And so say hi to the world because they're seeing you, amen. And uh, I'm so thankful for our teenagers. We utilize all of our youth to do ministry. As you can see, the, the teens behind the scenes, the song leader, the the um, the usher, and it's not because the older, uh, uh, the adults don't want to get involved, it's because the younger ones love serving. And they're the future of our church, and so we wanna make sure that we continue to raise them up and train them, and uh, so that when we go on, they have a, a church to call their own and to take care of, amen? amen. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take the offering. It's time, Jacob, please pray for the offering, and then we'll take the offering. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this day, Lord, just bless the rest of this day. Bless the people at home, Lord, that they're staying safe and like feeding themselves. And just be with the usher and be with the trees. Amen. 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 For everyone alive, uh, if you're hearing this song, just let it speak to your heart and the rest of you out there. Yeah. 
You may be seated. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise Amen. God for the singing and just how God has been using our, our <coughs> worship team. Amen. And uh, so thankful for my children, um, for Sister Angie, and all those that are getting involved in the in the singing around here. I just couldn't do it without you. Amen. Uh, I'm just so thankful for that. Uh, Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. I want to be a blessing to you today. Uh, I want to be a blessing through this message. I've been preparing this message. And, and uh, I have three parts for this message. I'll preach uh, one today. And then we'll continue on each Sunday. And so I uh, want to preach on, the, on this subject that, that you see on the screen. And uh, we're going to read two verses. And then we'll get right into the message. Amen. Can you hear me fine out there? Is that good? You guys good? Yeah. Okay. If I get too loud, just let me know. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes cameras can make you a little bit uh, shaky and shy and, and nervous, amen. But uh, I've, I've been through this before. I preach for Nuevas Alturas a lot of times, and they record every one of my messages. And, and so uh, eventually it just gets to be like there's nothing there. And so uh, just pray for your pastor and, uh, and pray for those that are having services at this time. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and we'll give you the verses there on the screen. The Bible says there in verse number 21. We're going to read you just two verses. And we'll preach out of that. And the Bible says in verse number 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till so seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. I want to preach on this subject, the 483 life. The 483 life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God, for all that you do in our church, all that you've done in the midst of us, God. We pray that you would just continue to bring people to Christ, Lord, that our church would be used for that, Lord, for your honor, your glory, and that we'd see more souls get saved. I'm just so thankful for just dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. And if there's somebody out there today who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, that they would make today the day that they would know salvation and they would accept him, Lord. We're so Thank you for all that you do. We ask that you move in the message, God. Help the people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, you know, let me take this off. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to get comfortable, amen? Uh, we're having church today, amen? And I don't want anything to change. I don't want anything to be any different than we always have services. I want things to be the same. And so I'm going to get comfortable. We're going to preach the message. I'm glad to see my sister here and Daryl. Amen. Praise God for their faithfulness. And they just made a decision recently to be part of us. And we're so thankful for that. And uh, just continue to be a blessing to them. And uh, good to see Javier and Letty here. Amen. So thankful for you guys. We had a great uh, dinner the other day. And uh, with the Angie and Ryan. Amen. <laughs> Praise God for that. In 2 Corinthians uh, <clears throat> chapter 5 and verse 10, we're told about an event that is going to come, and it's called the Judgment Seat of Christ. At the Judgment Seat of Christ, based on what I find in Scripture, it says that we're all going to appear before the Judgment Seat of Christ, and it says that all, meaning all believers, are going to be there. We're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before Christ. But it says that everyone that stands before Christ, all the believers that stand there, are going to receive in His body that which has been done, whether good or bad. So I take that to mean that we're all going to stand before Christ and we're all going to receive one by one uh, the things that we've done in our body, which means our entire lifetime, everything that we've done in our entire lifetime. And we're all going to stand before the Lord each and we're going to present all that we've done to God. We're going to give it to God and we're going to present it to Him and all that we have done in our life, our life works and Jesus is going to take all that we've done and Jesus is going to look at it and Jesus is going to give his assessment. He's going to give his assessment of both good and both bad in our life. And, and that's what I take that's going to happen. And I don't know what it's going to look like up there. I don't know how the scene is going to be looking. I don't know exactly how it's going to be uh, visually, but uh, based according to scripture, we know that uh, at the judgment seat, it's going to be an individual, even though all believers are going to be there. It'll be an individual by individual basis of presenting all that you've done, uh, whether good or bad, to Christ. And he'll give his 
us estimate. Amen? And we'll get judged for the works for which we have done, meaning we will have no chance to change anything that we did on this earth at that point. The moment that we get there, it's going to be done. It's going to be completed. There's not going to be a way for you to come back and make any changes. I would have did this different. I would have did that different. And we can't do anything to change it at that point. We can't go back. We can't make adjustments. And we're going to, uh, we're going to offer it to God. And He's going to give His assessment. We don't get to change a thing. So it would be nice to know what that's going to be like. And how that's going to go. So it's interesting to me and very helpful that we find a very short conversation that Jesus has with one of his disciples. When one of his disciples presents to him what he thinks is adequate and gives his and Jesus gives him his assessment. And I think we can learn something from that conversation that can prepare us for a time that we don't want to get there. We don't want to show up and then have a lot of regrets. Amen. We don't want to. We don't want to get there and, and, and figure out that, man, I should have did something different. We we don't want to. We don't want to uh, uh, show up before God. And I really wanted to present this before the Lord, or I didn't really want to present this, and and come to a time where we, we where it's just too late. And so, I think we can learn something from this conversation to help us prepare for that time. So let's get into it. Peter asked Jesus some questions about, uh, asked Jesus some questions after he's been talking about forgiveness and trespasses and offenses and so on and so forth. And, and so Peter comes and he says, Lord, how many times have my brother sinned against me or trespassed against me? How many times uh, that he can do that and I forgive him? And Peter, it seems, is is asking as if this maybe brother or, or, or person has sinned the, the same sin against the same trespass has committed the same trespass against him over and over and so Peter asks Jesus how many times can that happen then I'm supposed to offer my forgiveness some of us feel that way amen sometimes we feel that people uh, slap us in the face over and over and over sometimes people wrong us in our life they do things to us that we don't agree with and, and they uh, they do it over and over and over again and then we, uh, we we look at the Lord and we'll ask God how many times am I supposed to endure that over and over again how many times am I supposed to uh, offer my forgiveness and here's what's interesting is that Peter actually presents the Lord with an actual number he gives Jesus a number he comes up with this number he quantifies what he assumes would be adequate amount of forgiveness. Are you with me today? Good. You can say amen. It doesn't matter that Facebook Live is on or not. We don't really care. We want to be a blessing to our people. Amen. And that's why we're doing it. But they want to they want to they want to feel what it's like to because they're not here. So amen if you have to amen. Don't worry about the sound or any of that. You're in church. Amen. And we're having church. Amen. And so Peter, uh, so this is Peter, and you, we're talking about here, and he gives Jesus a number, and you have to assume that Peter is thinking big, right? I mean, he always did. Listen, the, this is the man that walked on water, amen? He's the, he, he's the man that goes up to the mountain and wants to build three tabernacles, and, and, and he's the only one that's not going to betray Jesus. I mean, he thinks big. And so here's Peter thinking big, and you have to assume that Peter is probably thinking that when he presents this number to Jesus, that the Lord's going to look at Peter and he's going to say, Hey, man, Peter, that's great. That's well done. That's amazing. That number you gave me, seven, that's more than I would have expected. Man, that's an incredible number. And, 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 and I think Peter thinks that he's going to say, uh, I'm impressed that you came up with that, Peter. And so as he presents to him his number... Jesus says to him another number. And so Jesus presents his own number. And it's 70 times what Peter came up with. 70 times 7. That's a huge difference, amen? And I would think that would have blown Peter's mind that he might be thinking, how could I have missed this? How can 
would I have missed by that much? And I would also think that it would have, that it would really affect Peter tremendously because Jesus says to him in the middle of that sentence, five words, and here's what he says to him. He says, I say not unto thee. I didn't tell you that, Peter. I didn't give you that number. Which would you would think would cause Peter to ask himself, where did I get that number from? Where did this come from? So think about this. Think about this. Have you ever met someone, maybe yourself, maybe you know someone who's been hurt so bad, and they found the situation just so difficult to get over. They could, I mean, it, it took a long time. It was just so hard. Uh, and and they, 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 they just found it hard to get over and, and forgive that one time. Or maybe they heard a message and the Lord dealt with their heart. Or they decided to uh, uh, forgive and God just really worked in all that. And, 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 and you meet that one person. And, and here's one thing that you'll learn. That, that it was a very big deal for that person to forgive someone that one time. And so we can say that if we're to look at Peter's scale of forgiveness, seven, and if we're to say we're going to look at the scale of forgiveness, once was huge. And in that day, let me just say this, the Pharisees had a teaching, and here was the teaching, that if you forgave a person uh, their trespasses three times, that would be acceptable, as the Pharisees would go anyway, to being righteous or righteousness. And so Peter doubles that Pharisee's number. He comes up with six, and then he adds an extra one to get to Jesus' favorite number. Amen? Amen? Number seven. And so he looks at the Lord and, 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 and says, Lord, can I ask you a question? And, but, but I'm not really looking for the answer. I'm going to give you my answer. And so... He, he tells Jesus, he says, here's my answer seven times. Seven times. And because this is Jesus, do you, you know that Peter had to think of this number that he presented? Uh, he presented the number seven and Jesus comes back with this, 490. Now listen, Peter is a disciple of the one who is on his way to the cross to forgive billions and billions and billions of sins. Amen. And Peter is probably thinking, at my best, I can only forgive seven. And it's almost as if Jesus is saying, but at my best, you can forgive 490. Amen. Jesus knew what Peter was capable of not under Peter's control, but under Christ's control. Amen. But here's what Peter, here's Peter's thinking. Seven's all I got. Seven's, a, seven's as far as I can go. And Jesus is conveying to him, not when you serve me. Amen. Seven is not all you can do when you serve the Almighty. Amen. Seven is not all you can do when you serve the risen king, when you are serving the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Amen. Seven is not all you can do. Not when you follow the master who forgives billions, not when you do it in God's power. And based on that example, I'm going to give you on the cross, Jesus is telling him, based on the example I'm about to go do on the cross and the comforter that I'm going to send you not long from now that will enable you to do more than you could imagine yourself to do, you can do more. Because on the other side of Peter 7 is this whole 483 life that he couldn't imagine at the time and likely, Peter thought, that's impossible. But the Lord knew what was possible through the Lord. Amen? Amen? 
Shouldn't we all have that mindset that we all know what's possible through Jesus? Amen. Amen. The, oftentimes we look at some things as impossibilities. We can't do that. That's never going to be accomplished. We're never going to be able to get there. We're never going to be able to see that happen in our life. I have uh, prayed and asked God, but I'm never going to see it come to fruition. It's just not going to happen. And the reason why is because oftentimes the things that we do, our prayer life, all our, our devotional time, our, our, our service, everything we do, we do in our own power. And we don't do it in the power of Jesus. And we have to understand that when Jesus expects more of us, it's because he's expecting us to do it through his power, Amen. not through our power. And so here's what we need to understand, that there is a 483 life. Are you with me? Yes. And it's possible... And it's possible that every believer can get comfortable and settle for the seven life when Jesus Christ offers us 483 more. And 483 more than we could ever imagine. In fact, all of us come up with our numbers. All of us. All of us have said our own bar in every area of our life. Whether you're in ministry as a pastor such as myself, or you're a ministry worker, you do Sunday school class, you drive the bus, you're a layman, you clean up the church, whatever it is that you do, all of us come up with numbers. Pastors, including myself, do it. All of us set a bar. And everyone in here has a bar for a prayer life. We've come up with that bar for what we believe. This is what I believe my prayer life should be. We come up with a bar for studying, whether for class, for preaching, uh, whatever it is. We, we say, hey, listen, I believe that this amount of studying, this amount of learning, this amount of preparation is adequate. And this is my bar. We, we come up with a bar for reading God's word. Amen. We say to ourselves that, that we say to ourselves and we say to God, hey, God, this is what I believe I'm capable of. This is where my bar is set. This is the best that I'm going to be able to give. This is what I think is suitable and what I think will accomplish what I need accomplished in my life. And all of us have a bar. All of us have a bar for visiting. Amen. All of us have a bar for forgiveness, taking the example of what's in the scripture, amen? How far, how many times we're going to offer our forgiveness to somebody, how many times we're going to uh, 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 finally get to a point where we're going to hit the bar and we're going to say, no more, I can't take it no more. We all have a bar that we set in our life and we have determined that is adequate and acceptable, all of us have a bar for visiting. All of us, uh, let, me, let me tell you something. All of us have a bar for giving. Giving to the church and giving to missions and giving to the building fund. And, and, and we say to ourselves, this is what we believe is adequate and this is what we believe is acceptable. I'm only going to give this much. Uh, I'm going to give this much of myself. I'm going to give this much of my uh, finances. I'm going to give this much of uh, my service. And we all have a bar set for our giving. And every member, every member, listen to me, every member sets a bar on church attendance. Here's what I think is going to be adequate and appropriate amount of times that I go to church. Here's what I think is going to be an adequate amount of time for me to step in there and serve God. Never member sets a bar on church attendance. We have a bar for ministry. And they'll say, this is what I think the bar is. This is what I'm going to do for the church. This is how much I'm going to give to it. Uh, my, uh, I, want to, I want to help out in the kids' class, but I'm only going to help out this much. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I'm going to help out in the nursery, but I, I'm only going to help out this much. And I really want to do snacks, and I really want to teach that class. But listen, I can't teach those little kids. Have you seen them? <laughs> yeah, I have. That's Jason. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we all have a bar that we set for ministry. Amen. We say to ourselves, this is what I'm going to do for the church. And not only them, but, but listen up. Every husband has here we go. 
And they say to themselves, this is the kind of husband that I think is adequate. This is this way of treating my wife or responding to her. This is my bar. And every wife has a bar. This is how far I'm going to go for my man. Every father, every mother has a bar. We all have bars. Listen, folks, we set bars for happiness. We set bars for patience. We set bars based on on our tolerance for pain, how much we're going to take. We set bars for tolerance and weariness. We all have bars, and we set them. We set them. Now let me tell you that I don't want to get to the judgment seat of Christ and present it all to Him to hear Him say, I didn't say that. Gay? Where'd you get that from? That didn't come from me. None of us want to hear Jesus say, I say not unto thee. So we ought to ask ourselves from time to time, where do we get our bars? Where do we get our numbers up? Where do we conjure this all up? Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people get their numbers from others. Let me take it a step above that. Sometimes we figure what is average in this world and, 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 and we figure that if we can just do just above average, we're okay. And we'll get our numbers and we'll get our, our bar from there. And, 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 and other people set their bars by saying, and you've heard this, well, that's how I was raised. That's all I know. This is what I've known my whole life. And, this is my life experience, and my life experience has set my bar for me. This is what I saw when I was in the home, and this is what I saw when I would go to church, and I saw it in that pastor, and I saw it in that congregation, and I saw it in the people around me, and the believers, and, and, and so that's my bar. Another set their bar based on what's easy. Amen. They say, well, if I can achieve it because it's easy enough, uh, that's about as far as I'm going to go. And others, it's whatever it takes to get by. I'm just going to do the bare minimum because that's all I need to get by. That's my bar. Amen. Amen yeah. Others set their bar based on offenses. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? They, they never, they're never able to rise above somebody else's offense. And that has set their bar. I can't get past it. That's my bar. And you might say, that's hard for me. Well, let me tell you that it's hard in that. And it's hard everywhere because Jesus is just trying to grow you. Jesus is just trying to show you something. Amen. And so things are going to get hard and times are going to get rough. And just like we're dealing now with this whole uh, COVID-19 and people uh, having the pastors having to decide to open the doors, not open the doors. What are we going to do? Can't go to the store. Can't go to the store. Uh, you know, it, it, the world's in panic. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Times are hard. But guess what? It's hard because Jesus is trying to show us something. Yes. Amen. Jesus is trying to show the believer that, hey, in the time of panic out there in the world, the church has to be the stability. The church has to be the place where they can come and they can find that, that solid rock. Yes. And there's going to come a time when you're going to be ready to give up. But here's my question to you. You're ready to give up according to whose bar? Whose bar? Do you ever question your bar? Do you ever say, where did, I, where did that come from? How did I come up with that number? How did I get to that point in my life? Where did this bar come from? Let me tell you that sometimes you might be thinking you're doing good. And you might even be thinking, I'm living the 483 life. Because everything in my life is going good. And, 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 and you think my, my, the 483 life is, I'm on it. 
And it will look more like more than enough in your life. And it'll look good. But let me just say this. Just because things look good doesn't mean that that's not part of your seven. You see, things could be going good in the seven life. Yeah. And you think you're doing 483, but you're really doing seven. Where's your bar set? Here's my statement. 483 life is the side of life beyond what we think we can do. Put it up there on the screen, Demetrius, for them. 483 life is the side of life beyond what we think we can do. You see, Peter thought that seven was enough and Jesus said, no, there's 483 more that you can do. There's more that you can do. This 483 life, it's, it's, it's a life that you can't do on your own, but you can do through Jesus Christ. Amen. You can accomplish it through the Lord and His will, and, and you, can, you can see it happen. And, and, and Peter said, that's not enough, but Jesus said, no, you have 483 more that you're capable. And in our Christian life, listen, we get stuck in the seven life when Jesus has 483 more for us. He has more in your ministry. He has more in your service to God. He has more in your marriage. He has more in your father and motherhood. He has more in your place in this world. And Jesus has more for you through the 483 life than you're giving it through the seven. Amen. Yes. And we believe that we can never achieve 483 life because what we're looking at, uh, we're, we're saying we can't do that, but we're looking at doing that through the abilities of our own powers. And so Jesus says, you can do more. But here's my question to you today. Here's my question to Community Bible Baptist Church. And even my question to those that might be watching online. Are you living the seven life? Or are you living the 483 life? Where's your bar set? What have you determined this is adequate for my life? This amount of Bible reading is adequate for my life. This amount of prayer is adequate for my life. This amount of service to God is adequate. Where did you get your number for, from? And then when you find out if it wasn't God that gave you your bar, then why don't we turn to Him so that He can set our bar? Amen. Or better yet, that He can reset our bar. That we can start today, we can say today, you know what, I'm not going to live that seven life anymore because God, you have 490 out there. You've got a whole 483 more that we can live. God, you got it for me and I'm going to do it through your power and through your mercy and through your grace. I'm going to accomplish that life that I never lived because I'm always just trying to settle for this life. But you have more, God. Amen. And you know, our church has seen the 483 life in this last year, we've accomplished more through God, through yes. Jesus, not Amen. through us. Amen. Because every believer in here thought to themselves, we're going to live the 483 life when it came to CBBC. And you know, I'm telling you, people out there, people maybe around might say that was impossible. And it was impossible, it is. But through Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. Through God, all things are possible. Praise God. Are you living the seven life? Are you living the 483 life? Mm -hmm. Let's stand. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. As we have our altar call, we can go ahead and call the worship team up here. We're, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and have our worship team come up here. Let me ask you, if God's dealing with your heart, if God's dealing with you on something, if God's saying to you, you know what, I need that. I need that. 483 more, I've been living this life, seven life. If that's you, why don't you come? Maybe you've not accepted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you don't even know what it is to live in Christ because you've not lived in Christ. Well, if that's you, why don't you come forward and accept Christ today? We'll show you what it means from the Bible. Are you hurting? We can show you what it means to have eternal life, salvation through Jesus Christ. All you have to do is step on out and walk forward. We'll have someone up here to deal with you. We'll show you what it means to be saved. You know, that's the most important thing about our services is that people get saved. If people accept Christ as their Savior because they know that they're lost. 
he's talking to your heart. You come forward. Don't worry about the recording. You come do business with God. You come to the altar of God and you serve your Lord. Tell God I'm done with the seven life. I want the 483 life. I want to live it for you, God. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. God bless you.